Hello there and thanks for tuning in. This is the subject of today's lesson. But before we get into it, if you love art, then check out the rest of our lessons at www.montmart.net because we have lots there. We also have our Facebook and our art club, The Creative Connection, attached also. So let's get into it. So we need a good surface. For this project, I'm using a Montmartre double thick canvas. Incidentally, the cotton used on these is unbleached. So as well as being more environmentally friendly, it's also a lot stronger. First, I tint the canvas with lemon yellow. Although this colour won't be directly seen, it is required as you will see later on in the project. I use a sponge roller to apply the paint. I find it gives a thin consistent coat and is really quick to apply. Next take the images found in the PDF. Just follow the link to get these or alternatively you can download it from the lesson at Montmartre's website. Take one down onto a sheet of watercolour paper. In this case a 300 GSM weighted paper and carefully cut it out with a hobby knife. And obviously use great caution when doing this. Remember the golden rule to always cut away from your person and on no account should children be allowed to use a hobby knife. Squeeze out some silver, silver series acrylic paint onto the back of the pad and charge that sponge roller. Position the fish stencil and carefully apply the paint. Even though the silver paint is considered opaque, because it is being applied thinly, that yellow base is subtly present. Make the stencil as cleanly as you can. Next take some Scarlet in the Silver Series range and mix it with some Montmartre Medium Gloss to the ratio of one part paint to about six parts medium and cover the entire canvas. If you cannot see the fish silhouette, it means there is not enough medium in the mix. I always get lots of questions about acrylic medium. Think of it like a clear paint. You will notice the fish takes on a rich red and because the base is silver, it reflects the light. This look would be difficult to achieve another way. Whilst that coat is still wet, take an old damp rag and remove the area around the eye and under the body. This is a very quick way to suggest tonal irregularity, which creates interest. In fact, this project can be done very quickly, in a few hours actually. To create a bit more interest, I just add pure scarlet. This is applied simply by following the form of the fish. It's quite subtle but adds shape effectively. Even though this project is all about graphic simplicity, sometimes a slight change in the tone is all that a viewer needs to catch their focus. I then take the second stencil and the sponge roller charged with more silver paint and take a stencil. Registering the second stencil is easy. Just line up the bottom corner of the tail and the top of the head. Don't charge the roller with too much paint as you want to avoid excess paint bleeding under the stencil. For the fish swimming the other direction, just flip the stencil over. Obviously ensure the previous coat is touch dry to avoid any unsightly paint transferal. So at this point you could leave the background that orange which looks pretty nice or you could recolor it now green is the complementary color of red so that would look pretty good too but i'm going to paint my background black just to redefine the fish and bring them forward a little bit to do this use an appropriate size brush use a flat and cut in around the fish to increase the flowability of the paint add a little water when you cut in around the fish, leave a thin line of that original red. This will suggest that the fish are edge lit, bringing them closer still. Although I am painting this on an average size canvas, this would be great to do as a large wall mural. The concept would still work the same. It is interesting, even though there is essentially only a limited amount of colours used in this work, for some reason it is still interesting to look at. Maybe it's the constant reoccurring shapes and the random placement of the fish that holds the interest. 
If one was to create a smaller set of stencils to use in conjunction, it might create even more of a sense of depth. Or maybe not. At the end of the day, it's all just an experiment, isn't it? As I said before, this project is able to be created very quickly. And if anyone was new to painting, there's no reason why they couldn't do this. I think this would be a good project for a few people to do over a weekend. You know, have a bit of an art jam for something different. Lastly, create the eye on each fish. This can be easily done by charging the brush and twisting the end. Then, the best part of the painting, standing back and looking at what you have created. See you next time!